Good afternoon, everybody. It is March 28th, and it is a gorgeous, really hot 87 degree afternoon here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. And I have a very exciting episode for you today because today we get to find out what happens after we bury our kitchen scraps in a raised bed 90 days later. Back on December 31st, I shot a video where I took a week's worth of saved up kitchen scraps of all different kinds and I dug a trench all the way down to the bottom of this eight inch raised bed. And I dumped all the kitchen scraps evenly throughout that trench and I covered it up with soil and I told you that I was going to come back 90 days later and show you the results. And I will make sure to link to that video above so you can see the original. Now today is March 28th, so it's been 88 days and that's close enough for the purposes of this video. In my original video, I had nothing planted inside this bed but garlic. I had it just starting to break ground and coming up. And I told you that this bed was going to be reserved for an experiment where I am interplanting tomatoes, basil, and marigold, all with this garlic in between the rows. And I was going to see if those plants interplanted together would act as a natural pesticide for each other. And I was able to do that for the most part, except I actually wound up running out of tomatoes. So I'm going to have to plant peppers in this location because my son comes from over there and I want to make sure that the tall plants, which are the tomatoes, go in the back so they don't shade anything in this location. If I planted tomatoes here and peppers over there, the tomatoes would shade the peppers. But since the peppers are shorter than the tomatoes, they're going to go right here instead. And here you can clearly see how the bed turned out. You can see all of my tomatoes are interplanted with the garlic and my peppers are going to go in the end and I'm going to thread the basil and the marigolds in between. Overlaid on top of this video, I'm going to show you what the trench looked like exactly when I dumped my original kitchen scraps. You can see them all neatly arrayed in the bottom of that trench, which I then simply covered up with soil and then the mulch on top. Now that it's been 88 days later, I'm going to take all of this mulch and I'm going to simply push it back and remove it. And then I'm going to take this shovel and I'm going to excavate this trench all the way to the bottom of this raised bed where I put the mulch. And I'm going to put it in this bucket that I'm currently sitting on. And then we're going to see if there's anything left. If it's fully decomposed, partially decomposed, what have you, we'll find out exactly what 88 days worth of decomposition looks like. All right, everybody, I dug down to the very bottom of this bed, like I said that I would, and I took all of my dirt and I moved it over into this five gallon bucket. And what I found, I'm very pleased with. Now I dug down and I rummaged around everything down here. And the good news is I found almost nothing, except there are particles of eggshells everywhere. Now, I did bury quite a few eggshells inside this trench. So it is clear to me that eggshells do take longer than 90 days to break down. And that's not surprising because it's very similar to bone. There's a lot of calcium in there and that's very difficult to break down since it's so hard. But the good news is all of the other things inside this trench are completely gone. Aside from these fragments of eggshells, there's really nothing else here. And I'm all the way down to the sand level. So if I scrape down here, I'm left with nothing but the native sand that makes up the majority of my soil in my yard. The more I root around here, the more I find absolutely nothing but the eggshells. And that's what happens 90 days after you bury kitchen scraps in your garden. Now that we know the answer to this question, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plant those peppers. So make sure that you keep an eye out later for a tutorial on how to plant peppers in your garden. Everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you found it helpful, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about anything that I use in my garden, everything that I use is in my video description linked in my Amazon storefront account. Thank you all so much again for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video.